Jumbo and happy Friday, fellow life adventurers. Round two here, Facebook is kicking up some resistance, but we're rolling with it. It's Friday, life is good. Thanks for being here. Spiritual tune-up number 200, I think. Thank you for posting your questions down below on Facebook or Instagram the day of a broadcast. This is where I get my material to speak on in the subsequent days. A lot of great questions this week on manifestation. Today's question is part of that process. How do you know you're on the right path? Specifically, for example, Mike, how did you know you should write books and become the voice of the universe? I, I got to admit that very rarely in my life have I been certain about anything. And that includes my future as a writer prior to being a writer and even after I started being a writer. Um, it's easy to think that for some folks, and maybe for some it's true, that you know their path was laid out before them and that it was crystal clear and they always knew what they wanted. Yeah, sure, a few people, minuscule percentage, know that. But the rest of us have self-doubt every step of the way, fear every step of the way. So here's my formula. First of all, the question was a little bit poorly worded, if I may say. There are no shoulds. The question presumes that we all have a destiny and your destiny is what you should do and all other destinies are wrong. You can be a wild flaming success down an infinite number of paths. Don't torture yourself thinking, is it this one or that one? Am I supposed to be here? Should I be going there? You carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. You're here to be happy and to adventure. You're here to see what happens. You're here to follow your heart. And wherever you decide to place your focus, your attention, your energy, all of the stars realign. All of the angels begin marching in unison and they all lock arms singing, oh, we owe. You're not alone. You're supported. It's going to be easy. That doesn't mean you're going to have clarity. Okay, so number one, there's no shoulds. Number two, I applaud you that you have a path and you're wondering about it. You are so far ahead of the game. Too many people don't even have a path. They're waiting for the yellow brick road to show up. It's not coming. Yellow brick roads do not show up. What happens is you get busy doing what you can with what you've got from where you are, filled with self-doubt and fear. That means you're on the right path. And one day you realize you're living the life of your dreams and that you found your calling, so to speak. Or at least, let's phrase it properly, you found something that totally lights you up and resonates uh, with you. As many other paths could have if you just bear down and give it your all and do it for the right reasons. We'll talk about that in just a second. Consider this as well. And this will take pressure off of you being on the right path. You can always change your path. You can always take a time out. And most paths get changed on the journey. A note from the universe said, you know, whatever road you start out on, is not going to be the road you arrive on. That's for sure. So what's important is not picking the right road, but getting started on a road. Then with your dreams in tow, your creative visualization that we talked about this week, miracles are being pressed to you, even though you feel self-doubt. That's okay. And then because you're out in the world, there's the opportunity for so-called serendipities, coincidences, there ain't no such thing, or happy accidents. Because you're under steam, you're out there in the world, and better than just being out there in the world, you're on a self-chosen path. You're better off choosing a sucky path than not choosing a path. You're better off going to that job you hate. Let me be the only speaker to tell you this. You're better off going to a job you hate than no job at all. Now, okay, there's a time and a place to quit the job you hate. And I'm not saying go and learn to love it. No, go ahead and hate it. Rise above it by mastering it until something else comes along. Another part of my answer to this question, if you're on a path, a self-chosen path, and you're not just you know twiddling your thumbs at a job that has no meaning for you other than the paycheck, which is better than nothing. But if you're on a path, 
stay there until something better comes along. That's, that's, I used to be a member of Toastmasters learning how to get over my fear of speaking. And I had a really great friend back then. We used to play tennis all the time. He's still a great friend. And um, seven years later, we still played tennis on and off. Uh, and he had long dropped out of Toastmasters. And he found out during one of our get togethers that seven years later, I was still a member of Toastmasters. And I remember telling him, no, I don't enjoy it, but it's making me a better speaker. And I'm going to keep on doing it until I have something better to do. Because back then I was single at the time and I didn't have anything better to do in the evenings, Tuesday night or whatever it was. Stay on the path until something better comes along. Now, there's caveats and exceptions to everything I share. I was working for Price Waterhouse for six years. Absolutely loved the firm, hated my life. And I was so desperate to make something happen. I did quit without any idea of what to do next other than become some type of entrepreneur. <clears throat> so, so I didn't follow my own advice there. I quit to force the hand of the universe. I did become an entrepreneur and the last paycheck I ever got from a company that wasn't mine was Price Waterhouse 30 years ago. So, you know, there's exceptions to everything, but hopefully you'll find what you need in these little tune-ups here. Um, you don't have to stay on the path. Um, but don't let fear or doubt be the only reason you get off um, and only get off the path if you're going to make something else happen, which I did. I forced my hand when I quit Price Waterhouse. Um, why did I start writing as the universe? I always felt there was a book inside of me. I always felt I had something to say, um, but it was pretty kooky dream for a left brain analytical debit and credit kind of guy. Uh, and so I did other stuff that resonated with me. <clears throat> Um, until, you know, um, forcing the hand of the universe, we started a t-shirt company. My brother did the art and I started writing. Uh, and that fed the desire to write more, but I never knew it was my path. I sent out manuscripts to publishers. They all said, no way, Jose. Um, I, I didn't feel like a writer, <clears throat> but I started writing the notes because I had nothing else to do. And I like expounding on the nature of reality. Okay, I'm rambling now. And, um, and then I started self-publishing. And then I got invited in The Secret with Ronda, by Rhonda Byrne. And then that became a hit. And then Simon & Schuster showed up. And then Hay House showed up. And happily ever after. So hats off to you that you have a path. And you don't have to stay on there for life. Take the pressure off. There's other great paths. But until something better comes along, generally, stay on that path. Give it your all. Be your best. Ask questions. And don't worry that you worry. Happy Friday and have a great weekend. Please post your questions down below. Thank you again for all the comments. Oh my gosh, the comments this week and yesterday and the day before in particular just put wind under my wings. I'm really grateful to all of you. Uh, if you can share and comment and wave and all that, um, it really makes a difference in the, the algorithms. So thank you so much. Thank you for the stars on Facebook. Uh, Kathy, thank you for being here. Diana, Mark, Cindy, Barbara, Daniela, Stacy on Instagram. Uh, scripted future. Oh, I like that. Jeb, George, you got some brothers here. Mo, Moana, is that Moana? Annie, Sweet Cassidy. Oh, thank you, everybody. See you Monday. Tally ho.